This question is usually seen as quite tricky. We've got here a complex, um, or it's an equation with complex roots because we think it's got the, the z's in there. And we don't know what the p and q parts are. It says p and q are real constants. And it says it's got the root z1, z2, and z3. When plotted on an argand diagram, the points representing z1, z2, and z3 form the vertices of a triangle of area 35. And it says, given that z1 equals 3, find the values of p and q. So I'm going to write down that z1 is equal to 3. And then we have z2 and z3. Now, you, lots of you did this in different kinds of ways. I probably would do what Marco had said initially, and he, you had written on the board, Z2 and Z3 must be complex, complex conjugates. You did, you did. So complex conjugates. I would then be like, okay, well, I don't know what Z2 is, so I'm going to call it A plus IB. Sometimes I write BI or sometimes IB. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter which way around, as long as you know that one of the bits is imaginary and one is, uh, sorry, that, it is just as long as you know that the i is the imaginary part. And then we've got something about this being to do with an area of a triangle, something in an area of a triangle when you plot it. And then when I look through these bits here, again, I always like to write down this is minus b over a, this is c over a, and this is minus d over a. This is the sum of the roots, the sum of the pairs, and then all three roots multiplied together. Out of those ones, it's obviously going to be a good starting point to think about this one because it's the one we have information about. We're not likely to want to use P or Q because we're going to, that's, that's what we're aiming to do. And it seems like that's a good starting point. And there's something else that's good about the sum of the roots for a cubic. What is good about the sum of the roots for a cubic or a, or a quadratic or a quartic? What's going to be good about the sum of the roots? It's always going to be a real number because the imaginary parts are always going to cancel out. So some of the roots is great because we know that we're going to get something nice and simple happening. So I know that the sum of the roots, z1 plus z2 plus z3, is equal to minus b over a, which is just minus 1 over 1. And when I add these roots together, I get 3 plus a plus ib plus a minus ib equals minus 1. Luckily, we get the ibs cancelling. So we just have 3 plus 2a equals minus 1. 2a equals minus 4. It would be nice if I put an equal sign in there, though. And a is minus 2. So sometimes with these questions, this is a, what I say to my year 11 class as well, that you start looking at a question and you're a bit like, I have no idea where to begin. Well, if I didn't tell you anything about it being a triangle, you probably would know to start doing something with this thing that you've got here, OK? And that's basically what you've got so far, right? Now that we know that a is minus 2, what did you guys do next in this question? Um, I think I said a is equal to minus 4 over oh, oh, yeah, minus 1. I did the a is minus 2. So like I, I put the real part of uh, z2 and z3 is minus 2. OK, so we're going to almost, you want to like rewrite these again. So you might now say that z is, z2 is now minus 2 plus ib and z3 is minus 2 minus ib. So we basically need to find out what b is so we can find p and q. So what was the next like stage of things that you did? Yeah. I used the information that the, um, there is, on the diagram, they made the triangle with area of 35. Good. So what did you do? You, did you sketch? You did sketch, didn't you? Yeah, in the end, but... So we can now sketch it. And we know that one of the roots here is at 3. And then the other ones are at minus 2 somewhere up here, and then minus 2 somewhere down here. And this is the good thing about them being complex conjugates pairs, because we know that they're not going to be at some kind of wonky angle. We know that they're going to have the same real part. So if I draw this triangle on, this is at minus 2. Obviously, you're going to need to tilt your head to see what the base of the triangle is. We said that this is b and that this is minus b. So the base of the triangle is how much? 2b, which is from here to here. The height was 5 from minus 2 to 3. And so we know that base times height divided by 2 is equal to 35. The 2s cancel. So 5b is 35. And so b is equal to 7. That's what you all got, right? So now we can say, even better than this, I'm going to now say, well, I'm not going to use these ones. I'm now going to replace them again. And now I've got that z1 is 3, z2 is minus 2 plus 7i, and z3 is minus 2 minus 7i. 
and then the rest of the question just becomes uh, the same things as before. It's just going to be using the facts that we have at the top. So a lot of people, what they try to do when they do this question is they try and um, they try and go straight into using the p and q bits without thinking about the other, in other information. Usually in these questions, they're going to want you to use all the stuff that's there before you can even get to the aim of finding out p and q. So let's actually do that. We now know that the, the sum of the root pairs, the product pairs, is going to be equal to p over 1. So the sum of the pairs is equal to p. So that's going to be 3 times minus 2 plus 7i plus 3 times minus 2 minus 7i plus minus 2 plus 7i times minus 2 minus 7i minus 6 plus 21i minus 6 minus 21i and then this you get plus 4 plus 49. Luckily they cancel and I think that all came to 41. Is that right? 49 minus 12 is 37. 37 plus 4 is 41. And that is the correct answer. And then we also knew that the product of the three roots was going to be minus d over a. So I can now say that alpha, beta, gamma is minus d over a. In other words, 3 multiplied by minus 2 plus 7i multiplied by minus 2 minus 7i is equal to minus q. I think it's probably easier to multiply the two complex numbers together first. We've already done it over here exactly. We've already done it over here before, which is 4 plus 49. And so that's 53 times 3, which is 100. So that's 159 is minus Q, so Q is minus 159. And I love this question because it is different from anything that's in the book. And there is nothing here that is hard. It's just the, prob the problem is harder. The maths is all the same as things that we've come across before, right? And what else was I going to say about this? When I've seen students do this question, particularly in the exams, there's like a panic that sets in. And the panic that sets in is because it feels different. But if you stop and you take things slowly, you will be able to do what you guys did, which was to just go through the logic of what we've just said. We knew that there were three roots. We knew they were complex conjugates, so we gave them names. I know that you used language of like the imaginary part or the real part. It just can be a bit quicker in terms of naming them like this. So I would, I would advise this, but you obviously still got the right answer anyway. Then we use the information we've been given about the sum of the roots. We drew a diagram. That helped us problem solve to find out what the imaginary parts were. Once we'd solved the equation, we were then able to keep going and actually do the easy parts. This is quite a big question in terms of like further maths core pure papers. Seven marks is like quite a big question. And it was the seventh question in the exam paper, which gives you a sense of it being quite near the end. So it was it's considered one of the more demanding questions that there were. Yeah. How many questions do that tend to be? It depends on which paper it is, but I would say there's, I, I actually paper, don't, I, I would say usually about like 10 or 12, um, I think, but I'm, that's something I'm not like completely sure on. And then I've just got the mark scheme here if we want to have a quick look at the mark scheme. It's a bit annoying with all that stuff behind it, but yeah, you can see we got that the alpha part was minus two. As long as we've got the P and Q were the right answers, we know we did this all right. I should probably have scrolled down, but... I didn't. Okay.